in the bar element we obtained our strain matrix as derivative of our safe functions similarly what if we want to find the stiffness matrix of the bar element to do this we have to look into the concept of strain energy now generally in a body your strain energy is given by half integration of the whole volume transpose of your stress vector times your strain vector the whole volume now the stress strain relationship is given by something like this as we did in chapter 3 this is in line with the Hooke's law where your sigma equals to e elastic modulus times the strain in a linear body now what you get is your strain energy may be equal to 1 by 2 integration then when you substitute this one you'll get e transpose d matrix transpose times e dv as you know that if you have a multiplication matrix and it if you do a transpose of this one you'll get p transpose times a transpose and again we can write our strain vector in form of b matrix times our displacement vector if we do that what you get is half integration of this one times you get u vector transpose the vector transpose then you get d transpose now the thing is that your d is a square and symmetric matrix therefore your d transpose equals to d so you can write d here and then you'll have b transpose again times u vector times dv you can write half here you can take this one outside you will have transpose integration of b matrix transpose d matrix transpose dv and then u vector now as you also know that our strain energy in terms of stiffness is given by half times k x square you can write this one as k matrix times of x square now in vector form what you do is you can write x vector transpose k and then you'll have your x vector now if you compare these two what you get is your k matrix is equal to this one so your stiffness matrix will be given by integration of v transpose d matrix and then v transpose dv now for bar element your dv is like a small volume so if you look at this one that's your cross-sectional area now your small volume that's let's say this is dx the small volume will be area a which will be constant throughout the length times dx so a dx now this one will become k matrix equals to 0 to l if this is 0 this is l this will be b transpose d vector b transpose and then dv your dv will be equal to area times small length dx this is constant you can bring it outside then you'll have b transpose d b transpose again a times l now we can substitute our values of p and d here now you see our b transpose let's see what was our b before this was our b so you can take this one down and write it there you'll get a l your d matrix for the axial rod e is equal to e because this is a 1d problem one dimensional problem so the, your d matrix will be equal to e now your b 
the transpose of that will be 1 by L you can write minus 1 1 here and your D equals to E and then your B transpose again this shouldn't be B transpose here yep because you see this doesn't have transpose so this shouldn't have transpose here so we should remove this one times 1 by L again times minus 1 1 so you can cancel out L and L and when you multiply this you get a 2 by 2 matrix this will be a e by l times when you multiply this you'll get 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 so this is your stiffness matrix for the bar element so this is how you obtain the stiffness matrix for a bar element or any elements of which we have b and d matrix this is applicable to our 2D element as well. So let's find our stiffness matrix for a 2D element as well. We have to find B matrix and D matrix and we will know the volume as well. So here like we did before the triangular one that's 1, that's 2 and that's 3 let's say we know the solution let's replace x by u we'll have u as n1 u1 plus n2 u2 plus n3 u3 based on these coordinates that's equation one and v you'll have n1 v1 plus n2 v2 plus n3 v3 that's equation two now you're u is in x direction v is in y direction now let's write this in matrix form what you'll get is u and v and if you write this in nodal form because that's what we usually do here you get this one as u and v1 u2 v2 u3 v3 you'll have n1 u1 now for u you don't have v1 so it will be 0 and then you get n2 and then 0 and then you get n3 and then no v3 that will be 0 now the arrangement or the location of zeros and n1 and n2 n3 depend upon how you specify your coordinates here you can write here u1 u2 u3 and then v1 v2 v3 for this case it will be n1 n2 n3 and then 0 0 0 so I'm writing it in this form for now and then for the next one you'll have 0 here and then n1 0 here n2 0 here and n3 now when you open this you'll find that your v will be equals to n1 v1 n2 v2 n3 v3 which equals to this one your strain value is given by du by dx now for this case for a 2d element you'll have three strain values you'll have strains in x direction a strain in y direction and you'll have a shear strain which will be gamma xy therefore if you write this one as ex ey and gamma xy please refer to chapter 3 on this one now this one can be written as du by dx this one can be written as d v by dy will be du by dy plus dv by dx now you can write this in matrix form as well now what you get here is d by dx 0 0 d by dy and then d by dy and d by dx and this will be u and v so when you open this you'll get du by dx then 0 and then du by dv by dy and 0 and then du by dx plus dv by dy let us denote this by a matrix l therefore we can write this as L matrix times let's say this is a u vector this is our e vector
Now, if we denote this by n matrix, which is the safe function matrix, and this one here are the values you solved, and this one is the point you are finding our solution. Now, when you look down, we can replace our u vector because this is location where we're trying to find our solution this will be equal to strain equals to l matrix times our safe function matrix times our solution this is let's denote this by u underscore and this is our solved values which you have already obtained now if you look at our strain and the relation between the solved value here it will be b matrix times of u when you compare it you'll get your b matrix as l matrix times n matrix now when you put the values here you'll get your b matrix as now when you look at these values here our n1 equals to l1x plus m1y plus n1 l1x plus m1y plus n1 this will be similar to the other ones so you see here differentiate this by x you will only get l1 and if you differentiate this by dy you will only get m1 so if you do that for all of them what you get here is and here y1 minus y2 this will be equal to y2 3 0 y3 1 0 y1 2 0 0 x3 2 0 x1 3 0 x2 1 and then x3 2 y2 3 x1 3 y3 1 x21 and y12 and i also forgot to write here that this is like 1 divided by 2 delta here this is divided by 2 delta so this will be 2 delta and this will be 2 delta this is our b matrix now if you look into chapter 3 then you'll find that there are two d matrices one is for the plane stress problem and another one is for the plane strain problem so depending upon your equation you choose these matrices so what will happen is that the stiffness matrix will be given by integration of b transpose you'll have d and then b and then dv now for a plate element it will have certain thickness and you know this area will be given by delta so if you look from this side it will have a thickness like this and your area is this one therefore your dv will be d times area you can write your area as delta you would have already found your b matrix which is this one so you write your b matrix here transpose and d matrix from chapter 3 and then you'll have your b matrix here so this is the equation for your stiffness matrix for the plate element you can use this stiffness matrix to solve for your nodal displacements now what will happen is that in the 2d element you will be given certain force and then you can write your equilibrium equation like this with this and then you can solve your unknown displacements using this equation now once you have solved your displacements you can now get your strain using this relation and then you can get your stress as well using this relation now you can check the numerical in my another playlist which is finite element analysis through abacus chapter one 
then there you can go to 7 that is 2d plate element modeling 